Ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again to open up the Absurdist Asylum. Today I will be joined by your host, Jeff Hutchinson. I am Jason Velarde, and we'll have our good friend Peter along. Uh, today we have a fun episode. We're going to talk about some fan theories. Uh, we wound up talking about Star Wars quite a bit, but I guess that's just because we're a bunch of nerds. Uh, we had fun recording this episode. I hope you guys have fun listening to it, and thanks for coming to the Asylum. And all the televisions out there that breaks me I was in dream, day dream I fell asleep beneath the flowers I fell asleep beneath the flowers See if it hopefully uh, it doesn't do it again. But uh, all right, did you guys already take that shot then? No. Okay, let's take. I a thought shot we were, I thought we were doing it together. <laughs> let's take a shot then. You can't right. have it. You can't. It's like I. It's like I always say. You can't have an orgy unless everybody involved starts fucking. That's true. My grandma used to say that. That's, I know. You are grandma. That does sound like a Miss Bailey, Mrs. Mrs. Grandma Bailey. Yep. Uh, all right, to to the grandmas. <laughs> oh fuck. Oh yeah. Feels good to live life of a baller and drink high grade booze. Uh-huh. I'm probably gonna throw up tonight. Unlike Peter <laughs> Bailey. Oh my god. Nothing touches this. Corn top. whiskey. Is not. No, it's a. Uh, Fucking Canadian. In my experience, Canadian whiskey is horrible. That's yeah. that's false. I, 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 I you have to be selective about your Canadian whiskey. That's for sure. If it comes, if it comes in a glass, it's <laughs> awesome. If it comes in a, if it like if it if it's a glass bottle, it's awesome. If it comes through a, it's if it's what? If it's in a glass plastic. God damn it! That's the other thing you make stuff out of. Finish the it's fucking a, story. It's a plastic. <laughs> plastic bottle. Tell me about the fucking golf shoes. <laughs> God damn it! Finish the goddamn story. Finish with the golf shoes. So speaking of famous movies, there's uh, quite a few fans out there who like to fill in the blanks with their own uh, stories or or theories. Um, and that's what we want to talk about today is, is fan theories, some of our favorites, some maybe that we've even come up with ourselves, or some answers to some uh, pretty, I would say, famous questions that are going around the internet. So uh, first off, I'd like to welcome Peter with us. Uh, how are you doing Hello. today, Peter? I'm doing so well, you guys. I am so happy to be here with you on this lovely evening, and I just can't tell you how much I've missed you all. And Jeff, namaste. <laughs> Jeff, how do you feel about that now, stay? Um, every every point of my life is a blur of masturbation and alcoholism. I mean, that's basically then, then you the say cornerstone namaste. of the show. Namaste. 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 Um, so, uh, you guys been having a good couple of weeks? I know it's been a couple of weeks since we last talked. I don't remember the last time I've had a good day, let alone a good couple of weeks. <laughs> I suppose like that could, should have been expected. Uh, when was the last time we talked? Like three weeks ago? It was about three weeks, yeah. Holy shit. So. On the plus side, I uh, the John, John Carpenter's Vampires is on my TV right now. And it's, that, it's a scene where Cheryl Lee is nude. But she's also crying, so it's sad. Sad boner. Oh, Cheryl. lap dance is always better when a stripper is crying. Sad boner is still a boner, <laughs> I always say. Oh. Ew, all the Cheryl Lees that I'm pulling up are very, very old. 
Well, Vampires came out in like 98, so it's been a minute. Are you saying these elderly women are like 400 years old or something? Maybe. So, Jeff, Man, they're that, all. that brings me to one of my first points is, uh, Jeff, you're probably one of the bigger movie buffs between the three of us. And I know this wasn't your idea, the fan theories. Um, do you... Do you have any interest in fan theories? Does it does it pique your mind to think about the movies that what they didn't show or or um, you know what else there could have been to the story? Um, almost almost never, but sometimes I'll read one like on Cracked, um, like you, you know that that thing that we wish we were like. Yeah. Um, and I uh, I'll read about it or listen to their their podcast. And uh, I'm like, that's pretty interesting, but for the most part, uh, no. So, what is one of the ones that that piqued your interest off uh, off of crack? Because I, I've listened to them as well, and and I think that uh, they do. That's one of the things I love about them is that they they bring up uh, things that you don't really think about. Yeah. Um. I, I enjoyed their uh, their uh, their Ferris Bueller being a uh, like a sociopath. Uh, oh, one okay. Where where he's he's actually like they were just putting the like I mean there there's was pretty based in fact though because they just kept pointing out all the all the horrifying like <laughs> implications about that movie and I haven't been able to watch it the same since that. Uh, and I've seen that one, and uh, you know, not to to you know dive into Cracks territory too much, but one of the the Ferris Bueller. <laughs> Why ones, not? We do it every day. <laughs> one of the Ferris Bueller ones that I always liked was, and they might have mentioned it in the the same post, was that uh, Ferris Bueller was just uh, like a figment of Cameron's imagination to where he was oh, yeah. just projecting this character almost like a fight club type scenario. Yeah. Wait, was that, that was cracked that did that? I don't know. That's what I'm, I'm saying. It might have in been. All, it. In all fairness, cracked kind of gets their ideas from, from Reddit, all around the internet, internet as well. Yeah. No, I mean, the you know, information's all out there. Where the, the internet begins and ends at cracked and I'll kill any person who says otherwise. <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate okay. that, Jeff. Yeah, they, I'm sure they really like. You Big know. shout out from Absurdist Asylum. I, hire me, hire, uh, <laughs> please. Oh my god. So, uh, but the reason I like that is because uh, the Cameron character, he's he pretends to be such a pushover, or, or he's such a pushover through through the eyes of the movie. But if you think of it in that sense, it's it gives him a really. Uh, unique perspective to where it's like it was all him and and the reason that 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 kind of sells it for me is that in the end when ferris is the one who actually or when he throws the car through the uh the back of the garage he insists on taking the blame uh, even though ferris was was right there and it kind of like leaves it open to uh interpretation as to whether or not you know, he had to insist on taking the blame because it was him the whole time or because he was finally stepping up to his dad. Either way, um, that that puts the, the character Cameron in a different light. Yeah, but all of all of these theories where they <coughs> they end up where they say like, What if it's a figment of his imagination? Uh, those never hold up because there's without fail all of these movies have scenes where the fictional, quote unquote, fictional character is like separate from the main character, doing like off doing their own shit. So it doesn't make any sense because they're interacting with everybody. You could say it's like a Fight Club thing where sometimes they imagine themselves as the like one or the other, but you could also go fuck yourself. Jeff, we're gonna have to teach you some new words. Um, I, really? I agree that yeah, there are, that out, right? there are quite a few of those, uh, we're like, oh, it was just a dream or blah, blah, blah. Like it, like whatever didn't happen. Um, but I think the Ferris Bueller one stands out because there are a lot of 
points in the movie, like when he pretends to be um, what's his girlfriend's dad. Um, Cameron pretends to be the dad over the phone. And then uh, Ferris, quote unquote, shows up in front of the school to pick her up. But uh, Mr. Mooney, I believe, the principal, never actually sees Ferris. Like, it's just, it's just a, like, all he sees is the girlfriend's dad. Mm hmm. She's cute, by the way. Yeah, well, yeah. was. Look her up now. Doing it. <laughs> was? Oh, no. I don't, I don't know her name either, but, um, <laughs> so that that one since you brought up Ferris Bueller's Day Off that's one that I thought was very interesting um, oh, Peter do you have any that because you're the one who brought this topic up to us uh, do you have one that you wanted to talk about have you guys ever heard about um, Jar Jar Binks being a Sith Lord yes I have it written down I love that one because I think it makes a lot of really good sense and I think uh it's kind of one of the original ideas that George Lucas had in, you know, in the you know the trilogy. Um, so yeah, go ahead and explain me, it to us. Let, yeah. Would you, yeah. Would you let me, let me, let me quote for a minute. I'm going to plagiarize off of somebody else. So consider we hate the way Jar Jar influences major plot points for the same reason we hate his physicality and misses with our sense of realism. Right, you know, he's just this goofy guy in the middle of the Star Wars universe. He's he's an asshole, and he continuously fucks things up. Uh, you remember, like the you know, remember the battle on Naboo, yeah, where he took down that tank when he was just swinging from the the turret and everything, and he grabbed one of those water balloons and he just destroyed it. I think that like, that's what they were was water balloons, right? I don't know what those were. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about, though. And I'm sure Jeff, and if anybody's listening to us, they've got to be nerds enough to know Star Wars. You guys know what those things are. So, yes. anyway, so <clears throat> I, I'm going to go off on tangents. Yeah, here. no, I, I hear you. So, diving back in. Uh, two experienced Jedi on a serious mission would never actually bring someone that stupid along with them. No character that idiotic would ever really be made a general. They certainly wouldn't be made a senator. How could anyone like Jar Jar really convince the entire galaxy to abandon democracy? It's ridiculous. These things are just political, the political version of the physical luck. Inadvertent, seemingly comical bumbling that is that just so happens to result in astoundingly positive results. But what if it wasn't inadvertent and what if Jar Jar's meteoric rise and inexplicable influence isn't the result of dumb happenstance, but the result of extensive and careful use of force, mind powers. So, I think that kind of sums it up pretty well. <clears throat> However, um, you know, people think that George Lucas had in mind um, from, from episode one uh, and going into episode two that he was going to use Jar Jar Binks uh, in that role but the very negative reception that was received by him, you know, from, from audiences really diverted that track. So, um, there's some plausibility behind it, you know, instead of, I mean, like with it being set up that way, uh, and I think it certainly seems very plausible to me if, if we were going to look at it from, you know, that realist fan theory perspective. Well, I mean, may I step in here? Up. Yeah, please. I, I've actually, I, I mean, I looked into this a lot, and George Lucas has actually said openly about The Phantom Menace, which was the first one where we first met Jar Jar Binks, that there was plans for characters that didn't work out because Star Wars fans, being as vocal as they were, didn't like certain characters. And so there's, there's no doubt that, in my mind, that was probably Jar Jar, and there has been people who have researched the hell out of this. There's videos of Jar Jar in the fight where he gets the uh, robot tangled around his leg uh, yeah. and starts kind of using the robot as a weapon, and it looks accidental. Yeah. There's people who have made side-by-sides of that and uh, Drunken Kung Fu. Or I believe that's what it's called, Drunken, <laughs> uh, drunken Boxing, I think that might have been what it was. And it, it looks... Almost exactly the same. 
um, it just from where his hands are to how he moves his legs and like the sweeping motion. Um, and, uh, and as far as him being a Sith Lord, there's lots of times where, and there's clips of it online. If you just look Jar Jar Binks Sith Lord theory, uh, and we'll link some of the ones that I looked at for sure. Uh, there's, there's clips of him in the background when people are having important conversations in the Star Wars universe and he's just kind of mumbling himself. And yeah. that's one thing that, that Jedi's and Siths use is they, they can't just like you know, they have to wave their hand or speak the words to get like like Obi Wan in the New Hope when he said, These are not the droids you're looking for. He had to he had to speak it out loud and wave his hand. Like there's there's clips of Jar Jar mumbling and waving his hands in front of people that it's like the the theory makes sense. Jeff, what what are your thoughts? I know you hate Jar Jar just as much as you probably hate everything. Um <laughs> Um, I, I mean, I used to have a Jar Jar Binks mug once. <laughs> From Taco Bell, I had the same one. No, this was, well, wait, yeah, maybe. I don't know, my aunt got me that as a gift. Did she get that from t fucking Taco Bell? <laughs> was it an actual mug, or was it uh, like, oh. it, was, it was a mug. Okay. Like an actual glass mug. All right. Oh, okay, no, no, no. Okay. Oh, I thought you were Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a mug and a Taco Bell gift card. I used half it's of it, of so like there's only three seventy five. But I mean that that being said, I, I think Jar Jar is a piece of shit. But I also um I I mean all of this sounds I've heard of this this like theory before, but I never really cared because of, you know, fan theories and really anything. I just I don't care. But this uh this um one thing to bring up, though, is didn't George Lucas say he made that character because one of his ratchety ass kids <laughs> designed it? I don't sound like, like an excuse. Oh, here you go. I don't. I don't feel like he would have taken that and been like, oh, that that thing my my little like spawn created. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it into a Sith. Like I don't know. I don't That's know, man. It's such a funny excuse, though. Like as a parent, you could just say to people, "Like, ah, no, I didn't think of that. That was just something uh, my oh, my dipshit my kid lame thought ass of. kids oh, yeah. did that. Blame <laughs> yeah, my yeah. kids. He's, re he's retarded, and I don't want to make him angry. So, uh. <laughs> but Jason, going back to what you were talking about with what George Lucas said, um, you know, just with some characters not working out, another piece of evidence kind of pointing in, in that area, um. Like the the introduction of Count Dooku, you know, wasn't me like mentioned before in the Phantom Men, like in the Phantom Menace, and you know, supposedly that's because he filled Jar Jar's role and was going to fight Yoda and all that stuff. And that's uh, and, yeah, so, I, I've I've heard that those the, that exact thing about Count du Dooku, um, and and I mean it, the the pieces are all there. It's and it's been half confirmed. Um, now, unfortunately, because I'm a big nerd, a lot of my theories that I wanted to talk about were Star Wars. Um, so in the effort of breaking it up some, Peter, did you have a, a different one that you wanted to talk about that, that isn't Star Wars? No, baby girl. I just want to talk about <laughs> Star Wars all day. All right, yeah, I, got, so, I got, I got, I got a better one. Okay. I got a, I got a good one. All right, Jeff. Okay. Um, have you heard the one about Gilligan's Island? Oh, tell me. Tell us, yeah, you know, yeah, I like this yeah. One. So this is, uh, um, I might need to look all this up to remember it, but um, basically, it's that they actually all died on the tour, um, and they're actually in hell, <laughs> and uh, and Gilligan is Satan oh, because he's like I have heard this spoiling everybody's plans and stuff. Uh, Ginger is uh, is you know what what is the sin uh, slut. Um, and then, um, <laughs> so, um, and then, uh, um, it skips it's like the 10th commandment. Like yeah. thou shalt not be a slut. Thou shalt not whore yourself all over town. I, I have heard that. And I think that makes the show hilarious. Uh, not that it wasn't like funny for its time, but that makes it funny to me now. Um, just, just to think that like, I mean, cause if you were
be Satan and do that to somebody where you just like mess with them on an island, would you be the big strong professor or would you be the meek Gilligan that nobody would suspect? Yeah. I think I find that uh, that's that's a good one, and then the other thing, just because I've been watching a lot of Courage the Cowardly Dog lately. Oh yeah, oh, yeah I've heard that. Oh, yeah. uh, well, well, which so, one? Go ahead. Uh, this is just the one that it's actually like nothing supernatural is actually happening, and it's just the the pers- like how a dog sees the world. Well, and, and that's why all of the all of the bad guys are like cats and uninvited guests and like mailmen and stuff. Yeah, and they're out in the middle of the, of nowhere because the dog just only knows the house as its world and and all kinds of uh, you know that I, I personally love that one because that just reminds me of my little dog scruff he just like <laughs> is is freaked out by every little knock at the door and yeah, uh he, he, he yells when you try and high five when you yeah he does <laughs> he gets freaked out because he thinks i think i got him from a an abusive home and and i think that he didn't like it when he his owner got hit but to bring it back up the Courage the Cowardly Dog, that is uh, something that makes more sense than the actual show because, you know, a dog that, like, you know, uses the uh, internet to fight Supernatural in his house, like, I mean, that just, leaving it as a per- personification to where the dog is just freaked out by every little thing that comes bumping. Uh, maybe, maybe dogs use the internet all the time. Maybe your dog just sucks. Don't say that. Well, Don't I mean, that, that would explain... Scruff is an angel. <laughs> yeah, I know. He really is. <laughs> shout out Shame. to the dog. You can take we'll a do shot. It. Here's, shout out to Scruff shot the dog. Off. Here's a shot in Jason's we just dog. Had, we just had the same thought at the same time. That so. little, that shout out to McGruff. That little furry yeah. gremlin. To McGruff. To McGruff. To McGruff. Because... He's just like Courage the Cowardly Dog, and we... Aww. It also yes. explains why, you know, Eustace and Muriel, the owners, Cheers. they never oh, feel, yeah. like, in danger. They're always, like, oblivious to that stuff, you know? Yeah. It's because, you know, he's perceiving it that way. Yeah. yeah see, that's, that's an example of a good <laughs> fan theory that just, like, actually, one, is plausible, and two... I'm sure even if that's not like that 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 was definitely considered when they were making that show. There's no yeah. way that they didn't consider a lot of this. It just matches up too well. Yeah. Um so moving on uh to because I have a little bit of Star Wars peppered in this and it seems like that's going to be a little bit of a running theme because we're all nerds. Um have you guys heard the the bug theory about Star Wars? No, I tell. don't believe that I have. So the theory is is that Star Wars is a story of a bug colony replayed by humans, and the theory is because there are um, worker drones like the stormtroopers. There is a a lack of females and all the females that are in the movie. And this has kind of been a little bit dispelled by The the Force Awakens, but it's very interesting to think about for the first three at least. But um, the the very few females are in, like, uh, royalty positions. And, um, And then there's the obvious, like, the like flying around bit uh that that um would like you know be like a bug perspective i guess but it's like it's like a bug opera as replayed by humans a bug opera a bug opera <laughs> which That's I mean, weird why are there so few few females there's well it's probably cuz it was made in like the 70s but uh it's because did you did you see how they made progress and none of them were depressed. It's because all the women were gone. Awful, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Patriarchy. <laughs> and we. And here is our scheduled hey, descent into bad. I'm rerouting all the emails to you. That's fine. All the emails that we're gonna it's, get. That's all right. They're all from email. me anyway. 
this place this place always falls apart around 40 minutes in i've noticed that well we're not even 40 minutes in but so uh, the the i i thought like the bug theory because that it just threw a new spin almost like an ender's game type spin on star wars because uh uh of the the bugger the buggers in ender's game um but you know, uh, you know what's the most interesting part about that theory, though? What's that? Is the fact that I hate it. I God, hate every single part of it, and that's Shut terrible. Up. Why? Jeff, if you if you hated if you hated things less, it would be more surprising. Explain yourself. Explain yeah. yourself. Like like a reason why it's terrible. Why it's like, not interesting? At least it may not be true. But why yeah. do you not find it interesting? Because it you're a horrible sucks. person. Anyways, moving uh, on. One that, oh, wait, I, wait. one that I know. All right, Peter, go ahead. Just want to ask you guys a quick question while we're just thinking about Star Wars. Why do you think so many aliens wear clothes? Don't you think there'd be more naked aliens, you know, in a, in a galaxy filled with life forms? How come nobody's naked? Well, are these are these aliens like? Like specific to Star Wars, like the yeah. aliens in Star Wars. Well, how yeah. many aliens do you suppose evolved without genitalia? Like, think about all right. Sebulba only wore a vest, which was the the guy who walked on his hands and punched with his feet. He was in and constantly giving everybody a goatsy. Ah, I don't know what that is. What's a goatsy? <laughs> if you don't know what that is, look it up. Let's do a shot to goatsy. To goatsies. I this will is. Not. What what is this like a like over a decade <laughs> later? <laughs> Shot to Goatsy. Okay. Um so so moving on from <laughs> Star Wars, uh I know Jeff likes or Jeff is at least aware of Rick and Morty. Peter, have you watched Rick and Morty? Oh yeah, I like that show. All right. I love Rick and Morty. And that was on top of it as you guys though. Okay. So have you seen the second season? Yeah. Peter? Part of it. Part oh. of it. Oh, Go on. You haven't finished the second season? No, not yet. But uh, I know Go ahead. Go ahead. Do you know Go what ahead. I'm going to say? All right. No so uh, this is – I want to know what you guys think um, – and, and Peter, I really want to say spoiler alert for this, but you said go ahead. It's okay. All right. Well, spoiler alert for Rick and Morty season two. If you haven't seen it, it's been out for a while. Looking forward to season three. Um, why do you think Rick is in jail? Like what? What do you think is the real? What's the what's the charge? Mm. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna leave. Well, wait. It is. There's a lot though. There's probably. I think. All right. So here's what got me thinking about this is, and I'm pretty positive. I sent both of you this link, but uh, I think that that he's in jail because he is has been so cavalier about just basically destroying entire planets. Like, uh, there's, there's been oh. at least, um, and this is a whole nother theory that I don't think we'll get into, but he's at least taken care of earth dimension C-137 because he made them all into Cronenbergs. And then he just like went and killed, like he didn't kill, but he like took over a comp uh, like a completely different dimension, and I'm sure at some point that's gonna go into it, uh, you know, at so in some place, uh, and then like it just it just seems that his uh, attitude isn't isn't valuing life, and I think that's that's probably why he got picked up and is in and and he says everything, so everything would be like taking care of everything when he goes into jail. He says, what do you, they say, what are you in for? And he says, everything. Uh, yeah. Makes sense. That show is so well written. It is very good. Um, it, it, I, I, did you guys have any thoughts on that one? Because I did have another one about Rick and Morty I wanted to ask you about. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to contribute a lot on the Rick and Morty. Well, this one is just one that... Uh, is, is is in the opening theme actually um, so in the opening theme there's a sequence where Rick and Morty are running and from what looked like like toads or frogs with teeth um, and Rick opens a portal on the ground 
and jumps in and the portal closes and Morty doesn't make it and, and oh, yeah. those guys are closing in but you don't really see what happens and so there's a theory out there that uh, that was Rick's original Morty and the reason why he's like trying so hard with this Morty and this uh, maybe not the family per se but uh, the reason why he got back into uh, Beth's life, his his daughter's life, and started trying so hard with this Morty is because uh, he lost his original Morty in that uh, in that sequence. I think uh, that is very plausible. Jeff, Jesus! Yeah, but they've already oh, they've already died before. Like you remember how like well, that episode yeah. where they yeah, carry each other's backyard? That's why well, it's more those that Rick and that particular Morty, like. The Rick and the Morty in the show are the the ones that we started out with. And, uh, oh, speaking of the destroying of the world, like the first time we see Rick and Morty, he's about to blow up Earth and start over with Jessica. Like, that's the, the very first time we ever see Rick and Morty, aside from the short that they originated from, which was Doc and Marty. But, um, uh, but yeah, you know... Uh, I, so yeah, but the the Rick and Morty that we started out with in that sequence the is is the Rick and Morty that that is still with us to the where Rick got arrested. Yeah, I uh, you know I think that that's pretty plausible. You know, you know, <laughs> I'd say it's a, I'd say I'd say it's a hair on on plausibility. You know. <laughs> Ooh, I just want to fucking suck that fresh yogurt at you, boy, and make a bowl of cottage cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so you guys ready, ready, ready to talk about Star Wars again? <laughs> I texted him to say that at the very beginning. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, find an opening to say this. And that was perfect. <laughs> oh, I found it entertaining. Uh, you guys ready to talk about Star Wars again? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you want to talk about fan theories that aren't like that great um, or that plausible? Uh, one fan theory that a lot of people thought was very plausible was that uh, Luke Skywalker was going to be the true identity of Kylo Ren. Before we knew anything about, you know, uh, The Force Awakens. Um, and, and it was because, you know, Mark Hamill himself said he, while he was at, um, it was like Comedians at Brunch or something like that with Kevin Smith and J.J. Abrams, uh, was talking about how he thought Luke Skywalker should have gone to the dark side, but in like Lucas wanted a happy ending for Jedi because he was trying to sell toys, <laughs> and so that's that's one that is like as plausible as it sounded. Uh, you know, come to find out, it was it was written differently in the history books. You know. I'm glad they didn't do that. Well, I'm really interested to see what happens with Luke anyways. Um, and this brings up another question that I want to know about, know from you guys, is do you guys have a theory on who Ray's parents are? Hmm. I, think, I think unseen. Like, not yet before seen. Well, J.J. Abrams said they definitely were not in The Force Awakens. Like the huh. parents. Well, the force is passed down through parents, pretty much, is it not? Well, but it's been picked up at random because that's where Anakin Skywalker came from. Is that that the uh, his midichlorians were? Um, uh, according to lore, he was made. He was created by Darth Plagueis. Anakin. Yeah, um, uh, well, and that was the whole uh, Immaculate Conception thing, too, is that, yeah. that um, his mother, yeah, well. Um, I, don't, I don't think they're, uh, I don't think they're, 
they're doing the I think they're writing off the the Metachlorian thing. Let's pause for a second and talk about Metachlorians. I took to the Star Wars subreddit and did some digging and most people think that they're probably never going to be mentioned again in the franchise. Most of us would agree that that's not a terrible mistake. So thank you to the Star Wars subreddit for some answers and you guys heard Daydreaming by Lupe Fiasco off the album Food and Liquor. I chose that song because without any introduction to canon, that's all we're doing with these theories. It's just a bit of daydreaming. And you'll hear Roundabout by Yes off the album Fragile. I chose that because uh, it seems to be a bit of an inspiration for Peter this episode. Uh, be sure and let us know what your favorite fan theory is or where you think we messed up. And check it out on Facebook at Absurdist Asylum on Twitter at Absurdist Asylum. Uh, that's without the apostrophe S. And email us at, at Absurd Asylum. Uh, that's Absurd Asylum on Gmail. We are going to drop back into Peter Pondering Metachlorians, how one becomes force sensitive, and the meaning of life. Thanks for sticking around. I need to know more about this, because if it's not, like, hereditary, which, oh, that was kind of a shaky thing, but, hmm, so he wasn't in Force Awakens. They weren't in Force Awakens, so who else could it be? Were they, would they? Would that mean they could be, that does mean they could be in the other movies? I think. Maybe it's Jar Jar Binks. Maybe that, Jar Jar Binks is her mom. Uh, that would be, that, <laughs> we don't know that Jar Jar Binks is a guy, by the way. You know, I'm attracted to tell. both of them. That would be quite amazing, <laughs> genetics-wise. Might um, not have passed down the force, but she he passed down that ass. <laughs> Next episode, let's check out Jeff's fan fiction for <laughs> Kyle Ren and Jar Jar Binks. Oh man, we're gonna have a live reading and a free PDF for you to download. So <laughs> tune in. <laughs> uh, one popular theory about Ray's Paris is that she's gonna be the daughter of the character from the Rogue One uh, series. But a lot of people are pretty critical of that because they're like, oh, yeah, sure, because there's two, uh, you know, dark-haired women in the Star Wars series. They have to be related. Uh, but that is that is a popular theory that's been going around. Wait a minute. What if, like, what if Luke Skywalker is Rey's, like, grandpa? That's a possibility. They're all pretty old. I mean, I but... Know. There's we if that's the case we have no evidence of like Luke ever having a relationship outside of kissing his sister. Yeah, but but Han and Leia and Leia's got well yeah of course, it's, yeah you would I, you could assume but we have no evidence outside of that. No, that's not what's happening. It's Luke and Leia are yeah. the parents. That would explain why they dropped her off in the middle of nowhere. Like, we can't have this thing around. That planet was the equivalent of a prom <laughs> night dumpster. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. That's the twist. They're trying to make these more dark for the, for the, for the for teens. For the new crowd. See, you can relate to Luke and Leia. <laughs> they're going to be like... I'm gonna be all like. <laughs> That's why she's trying to find Luke the whole time. Like, it it survived. It grew up. It's a girl now. <laughs> Jesus. We thought uh, it was gonna turn into a sarlacc and turn into a woman. Oh my god! Tell everybody, what we've done. Oh man. <laughs> That's my. You wanted a fan theory? That's mine. The galaxy is uh, full. With incest. That was oh <laughs> man, I may be spot on. We don't know yet. Um, so so speaking of things we don't know, do we have any theories about who uh, uh, Supreme Leader Snoke is? Ew, I've seen a bunch of pop ups on the internet for that, and I haven't read any of them. So he's a really short man. No. I well, the thing of it is a hologram. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a short man that gets put into a big hologram, and that's where Kylo Ren learned <laughs> to intimidate people. He's the Wizard of Oz. When you're a bitch. Uh, do not Could look be. behind the curtain. <laughs> There's Luke and Leia's prom, <laughs> baby. <laughs> uh, um, so so I, I mentioned this name earlier in the podcast, 
uh, did you guys recall the story of Dark Pelagius the Wise, uh, as told by Emperor Palpatine? I, I, I remember it happening. I don't remember. Yeah, well, my, my grandma used to tell me that story. <laughs> Um, so, so basically Darth Plagueis the, the Wise learned how, you learn how to use the Force in order to heal himself, or, uh, he, it was implied that he learned how to use the Force to, uh, bring people back from the dead, and that's mm -hmm. why Anakin turned to the dark side, because he wanted to study how to, like, stay, yeah. uh, Padme, um, but so it's theorized that Emperor or, or, or Supreme Chancellor Snoke is is Darth Plagueis because uh, it's theorized that like it was implied that Darth Sidious killed Darth Plagueis uh, and that um, but it was also implied that Darth Plagueis learned how to bring people back from the dead so. The theory is that Darth Plagueis has brought himself back from the dead, and he is uh, has transferred from body to body. One of the theories is that he's in Vader's half burnt body from the end of Jedi. Uh, I'm not sure how much I buy that. Uh, they they do a mock up of the scars on his face because I'm sure you remember. Uh, Snoke had quite a few scars, as did Vader when they tore off the helmet at the end of Jedi. Um, mm -hmm. But that—that uh, that is one that I was in, I, I'm intrigued by because I, I, I consider myself a Star Wars fan, as I'm sure anybody who's ever listened to us might know. Uh, and I do not have a, a grasp on who I think Snoke is, and, and that's one of the solid theories that I've heard because of the evidence that'll stack up. And I'll post that video as well uh, to our Facebook and Twitter. Well, George Lucas came out and said that Snoke was Luke and Leia's, like, teenage baby. That's what? When, when, uh -huh. when, uh -huh. Danny DeVito, John well, they could be Tommy <laughs> But what does George Lucas know? Well, he obviously didn't say that either. Yeah, that's not true. Oh. Did I say Luke and Leia or Han and Leia? You said Luke and Leia. Okay, good. That's what I wanted. Yeah. I wanted to be gross. <laughs> uh, mm. I I do that thing where if you can't contribute anything but feel like you need to say something, it's gross. It's gross. Just just say the who would just want to fucking suck that fresh yogurt. <laughs> Make a big old bowl of cottage <laughs> You'll memorize that and okay. just kind of drop it into everyday conversation. <laughs> Get it tattooed. Because this. Because, because fuck it, that's why. <laughs> because it's it's just icky. Was it gonna ruin your career or something? I mean, come on, just say it. It's fine. <laughs> so uh, we touched on. It'll some... probably get you a date. We touched probably. on. I'm gonna throw that out and slide that in somebody's DMs. <laughs> right. Uh, uh. We touched on some DMs earlier. No, we touched on some 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 Nicktoons earlier. Uh, one of the ones that we also touched on some diarrhea. <laughs> one of the ones that I thought was was interesting was that uh, I'm sure you guys remember the cartoon Rugrats uh, that. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, all of the babies in Rugrats were dead. Yeah, uh, that's super dark. For, yeah, well, of course it's dark. I don't look at anything else online. It's not dark. <laughs> um, uh, I don't. I'm not a cat. I'm not a cat videos person per se. And you guys didn't want to see my fucking trainee video. I watched all the life. homunculus videos. Oh yeah, De Jeff, did you see those? <laughs> Are you right. serious? We, we here sat is. here on Skype and you kept sending them to me <laughs> and asking me my reactions in real time. <laughs> you know what? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, 
So we'll have a homunculus episode when the guy releases the full grown one that he's keeping. I think um, we should all do it ourselves. I think we should do a separate episode. <laughs> and I think we should all find some syringes. I don't think I want to put da, that da, da, da. I'm I not going to give it up to the listeners just that. yet. But it's, you will be, I'm just going to say, listeners, after we do this, you will be horrified I or disgusted. It's pretty really crazy that, that, sure. that, uh, that Ray didn't end up looking like a homunculus. <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> happy day <laughs> <laughs> so it'd be a whole different movie if it like pans around and instead of some like like good looking girl it's just like <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. she uh she oh. Cronenbergs herself into a big like scorpion like <laughs> um, how about that for a theory? Uh, you guys want to take a shot and, and talk about you guys everything else? I think we should do a homunculus show. A homunculus show? It's going to uh, take at least a month. I don't think that. I don't. I, well, yeah, if if he at comes out with... No, that's what the video says. It? The video says to incubate for 30 days plus. Oh, 30 no. to 45? I'm, I'm not into that. I don't need, I I don't need a kid. I have a question. To make this homunculus, you have to like, like jizz into a baking pan or something, uh, right? No, 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 I, no. Into a syringe, which it, get that? You have to get your cum in a syringe, and then you inject it into the yolk of an egg. Oh, I got it mixed up with baking a cake again. <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh God. man. Before we, we get too off the rails, do you guys want to say goodbye? <laughs> This is a perfect place to perfect. leave it off. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Good night, everybody. It leaves the, uh, it leaves the listeners wanting. Send us your homunculus pictures. We'll, we'll put the... Don't, uh, don't, <laughs> don't do that. And next, and next show, we're going to do on-air live abortions with your homunculus. <laughs> Tune in. <laughs>